I want to teach you how to break things. And when I say break things, I really mean break things, like physically, virtually, and metaphorically. And just to set the mood, I want to play you a little audio clip. But before that, let me paint the setting. So I was working in Switzerland as the chief technology officer. And after like two years of hard work, I finally got the chance to take my first proper vacation. Two weeks in the sunny Czech Republic. So I woke up in the morning at 5 a.m. I went to put gasoline in my car. And then I took my morning cappuccino. Then my 14-hour drive to Central Europe started. I, I drove to Switzerland, to Germany, and finally to Czech. Ah, beautiful Prague, just as I remembered it. I was driving alongside the Valtava River, just past the Prague Castle, while my girlfriend was sitting next to me, blasting the perfect road trip music from the car stereos. And we were, you know, supposed to crash on her, uh, on her friend's sofa, Just before this awesome yet tiring drive ends, we have to find a parking place in the hilly side of the city of dreams. So I park my car, you know, I get out to stretch, and then I check my phone. Sorry, man, I know you're on vacation, but we're kind of having a situation here. Looks like that somehow all the customer data got deleted. Could you please call me back when you get a chance? So yeah. We broke things. This was my CEO, Diego de Vittorio, such an amazing business leader. So I went to the nearby cafeteria. We had a little teleconference. And after like, I don't know, a few hours, four, four hours of working, we finally got it figured out. You know, my, my boss there in Switzerland handled all the business side, and I made sure that we get the backups. But you can be damn sure I made a perfect data recovery plan after this happened. Move fast and break things is a term coined by Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO and founder of Facebook. And he said in 2009, if you're not, moving, if you're not breaking things, then you're just not moving fast enough. But what does it mean, actually, move fast and break things? To me, it's a state of mind where you're not afraid of failure. And it's very important for startups, but also for personal growth. Because we live in, a, in an exceedingly complex world where everything moves faster and faster. There's new technology invented on a monthly basis, which means that startups, historically, their only advantage has been moving fast. You know, big ships are slow to turn, right? But also, I think, it can be separated into two distinct statements. Move fast is a methodology for startups to keep ahead of the competition. And break things is an analogy for personal failure. Might it be in the workplace or somewhere else? Eight out of ten businesses fail in their first 18 months. And that statistic seems gruesome, right? So Richard Branson, the virgin mogul, and no, not that kind of a virgin, this kind of a virgin. So Richard Branson has had dozens of his business ventures fail during, during the years. And in an interview, he said, over the years, my team and I have not let the mistakes, failures, or mishaps get us down. Instead, when a venture has failed, we try to look for opportunities to see whether we can capitalize on another gap in the market. And actually, failing in business is so common that Thomas Watson, the former CEO of IBM, famously quoted, the only way to succeed in business is to double your failure rate. So now that you have a little bit of an idea why breaking things or failing is so important in business, I want to talk about moving fast or what time means in business world. So just to show the idea, I want to tell you about my very epic triangle of domination. It's, um, it's a triangle of business. And that triangle consists of money, it consists of time, and it consists of knowledge. And I define money here as the assets 
of the company. And I define knowledge as the expertise of the people, but also the motivation, how hard they work and what is the quality of their work. And time. It's a little bit different because it's a time as you and I see it, but it's relative time. If your company can create that innovative app in two years, but everyone else has to take three years, then you have a lot of time. But if your company can make it in one year, but Microsoft over here does it in two months, you have no time at all. So if we look at a big company with a lot of history, for example, Amazon, we can see that they have a healthy balance of all of these things. They have enough past innovation and enough history, see, so they're not afraid that somebody will blatantly steal their business model or market share. And also Amazon has literally $40 billion in liquid assets. And liquid assets being you know, money that is just lying around like you have in your bank account. And then if we look at a, a company, a startup that has gone through a few investment rounds, for example, Walt, the Finnish food delivery app, delivery company. So they have a lot of innovation and excitement in their company. They have some amount of money just from the investment rounds, but they're a young company founded in 2014. So they don't have that much time. So they have to, you know, stay on their tippy toes just to out innovate others. And then if we look at a startup on day one, for example, Adam Digital, where I was the CTO, this is your company, by the way, on day one. Hopefully you have a lot of motivation. Hopefully, you have a lot of expertise, but you have basically nothing else. So now if we look through the triangle, we can hopefully, uh, hopefully understand a bit better what time means inside business. But just to solidify the idea, I want to play a little thought experiment with you guys. So let's say Amazon wants to crash on a market. For example, they want to create a food delivery company in Europe. And with their essentially bottomless war chest. They put just 1% of their $40 billion into this company. The company would have more money on day one than Walt, the food delivery company in Finland, is even valued at, around $400 million. So does this mean that Walt is just you know, going to give up and lose all of their market share? Well, the interesting thing about time is that you can only buy certain amounts of it and in certain things. For example, you can buy programmers and create an awesome app very quickly. And you can buy things like scooters or negotiate deals with uh, you know, the restaurants. But how about more abstract things? Like, you can definitely buy customers and users with marketing dollars, but how about customer satisfaction? You can definitely buy those programmers but how about worker motivation? You can dump a lot of money into an awesome customer retention plan, but if you're a part of a huge organization like Amazon, you cannot make the decision making go any faster with money. And the thing is, usually when the companies become bigger and bigger, there's usually less and less people who are willing to take calculated risks. And the idea of moving fast and breaking things is not an idea of risk taking, it's an idea of risk management. It's an idea of feeling proud for the things that you do and feeling proud for failing and learning from the failures. And companies usually, they don't want to fail because it just feels bad. So I want to move away just a little bit from the business world and more into our personal growth world and why failing is so important for all of you guys. So how many of you here think that you have failed at some point? You know, no matter how big or small, you know, just raise your hands. Okay, nice. So most of you. And for the people who didn't raise your hands, you know, you're either lying or you need this part of the speech badly. Because everyone fails. And the first step from learning from the failure is to understand when it actually happens. So there's different types and different scales of failures. And a thing you need to know about me is that I just love stupid names like the triangle of domination. So of course I named this the scale of fail. And um, on the left side of the scale of fail, we have soft fails. For example, like my friend tripping over while trying to look cool on camera. 
or me forgetting what to say on stage. So what's the worst thing that can happen there? Probably embarrassment, right? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. But on the right side, we have heart fails. For example, doctors failing a surgery. So what's the worst thing that can happen there? It's probably death, right? So you see that we are bouncing on a very clear scale, a scale of fail. But when, when that failure actually happens, there's not many options on what to do. And I would argue there's only two options. Either you learn from the failure and you understand the failure, or you don't and you're bound to make the same mistake again and again. So I'm one of those people who will go to sleep, you know, at like midnight, I'm super tired, and then I'm zapped right awake, because I remember that one time on third grade, when I vomited on the floor at a birthday party that I wasn't even invited to. And then I just cannot sleep for, you know, hours on end. And the thing with failure is, and why we are so afraid of it, is because we think we are judged for our failures. And I don't have any magical cure for you guys on how to let things go, but when those demons are coming for you, be sure to give them a hell of a fight back. Do some introspection. Understand the failure, so at least there's going to be one less demon lurking for you in the future. So here's a, here's a fact. People don't generally actually care about your life. And I'm not saying that to you know, sound edgy you know, or pessimistic, because I love people. I think everyone is awesome. But when you think of your own failures, like when you said something super stupid, or when you forgot to go to the job interview, or when you were in third grade and you vomited on the floor at a birthday party that you weren't even invited to, you're literally the only one who remembers that. And, you know, I, I failed during this speech. I've forgotten to say some things that I wrote down in my script, and I've tripped over my words a few times. And, you know, it happens. And, by the way, I wrote down that statement in my script because that's how, sh how sure I am that I will mess up at least a little bit. But it happens, and I'm not going to lose my sleep over it. Unless, I don't know, if I vomit on the stage, then I might, <laughs> just a little bit. But it's very important to forgive yourself for any possible failures, even before they happen. Because you will never perfect anything. You will always just feel that it's good enough. There is even a saying in the movie world, no movie ever gets finished, they just get released. So, let's talk about the future. Like, what will happen if uh, big companies start, you know, implement implementing this kind of a move fast and break things mentality? Will that mean that all the startups are going to be left behind because that was their only advantage in, in business? Well the, f well, the fact is that, no, they really won't. They won't be left behind, they won't cease to exist. Because when you guys, when you guys are going to start your own company, and when you think of your company's shortcomings and failures and the reasons why you just cannot keep up with the big guys, you will remember that one time the weird nerd in Kovola spoke on stage about accepting, about understanding about, and about learning from your failures. And then you will innovate you will find better and more sophisticated ways of keeping ahead and crushing the competition. Because big companies are entities, but startups are groups of like-minded, skilled and highly motivated individuals. And individuals move fast. And individuals learn from their mistakes, but entities hardly ever do. So you guys, you guys are the future. So hold on to that. And remember to always do everything in a way that you can be proud of it in that moment. And always keep learning and never give up.
Give your everything to every single project you do. But most of all, remember, always move fast and break things.